When I first got pregnant, I wasn't sure what I should eat, what I couldn't eat, can I still have coffee, what supplements do I need to take. It was really overwhelming, so if you are pregnant as well or trying to get pregnant and you're vegan, then I feel you. Let me help you out. Hi, I'm Kira. Welcome or welcome back. I share easy plant-based recipes to help you look and feel your best. Now that I'm 34 weeks pregnant, I am super healthy and confident and have learned so much about the vegan pregnancy world. So I'm really excited to just share all of my tips and tricks with you and show you a realistic what I eat in a day video today. I eat very intuitively, so we'll see what I eat today. I don't really have any plans at the moment, but we are gonna start off with just a little bit of a snack before I go to the gym and then we're gonna get into some breakfast. Let's go. I like to start my day with something small because I love working out in the morning. So I'm gonna go to the gym right away and I don't want something too heavy in my stomach, but I don't wanna work out on an empty stomach. I'll go for like a piece of fruit with some nut butter. Today I decided to just do a banana because we didn't really have any nut butter in the house. Our new apartment is amazing. The walk to the gym is only three minutes. It's in the same like complex and it's so beautiful. And it's just a cute little gym, but it honestly has everything we need. Plus a nice view out into our main pool area. Once I got back from the gym, I was craving something savory for breakfast. So I ended up making this high protein tofu avocado toast. Super simple, easy breakfast, really high in protein, good healthy fats. Comes together honestly in like five minutes. So it is definitely one of my go-to breakfasts or lunches even. All you need is your bread of choice. And while that's toasting, I'm gonna make myself a coffee, which right now it's fall. So I'm gonna add a little bit of pumpkin seasoning onto the top as well. And then for your tofu filling, all you're gonna do is some silken tofu. I love using silken because it gives it a nice creamy texture. If you use firm, it's gonna be kind of like dry and not as good. Then you're gonna add in a full avocado, some tomato. You could also do some onions here or even pickled onions. If you have different fresh herbs you wanna throw in like dill or cilantro, that would be really good as well. Then you're just going to smash it up like you would kind of like a regular avocado toast. And I like making mine into like a breakfast version so it has that eggy flavor. So I'm gonna add in some Kalanamak and then just some salt and pepper to taste. You can also do a little bit of lime juice here. I don't think I had any limes, that's why I didn't add any in. And then just Top it on top of your toast. My toast was super dark here. It's a little bit more burnt than I would like it, but that's okay. And voila, super easy five minute high protein healthy breakfast. And I'm just going to enjoy that with my coffee while I do a little bit of computer work. For lunch, I was craving something a little bit sweeter because I had that savory breakfast. So I'm gonna do these salted caramel tahini apple oats. So, so delicious. I have been obsessed with this flavor lately. All you're gonna do is just combine your oats with a little bit of flaxseed or whatever kind of seeds you like with a little bit of your protein powder. Cut up an apple, put that on top, and then mix that all together with some hot water. Then you're honestly just gonna leave that and let it sit for pretty much as long as you can. I ended up making this a little bit earlier, so I let it sit for like an hour or two hours. And then once you're ready to eat it, you can make your extra topping. So I'm doing this tahini caramel sauce, which is basically just tahini with maple syrup. I have been obsessed with this lately. It is honestly so good. It goes good with like your fruit or granola, or if you wanna do like a yogurt granola with this on top, so good. Then I love topping my oatmeal with some cinnamon and a little bit of milk just to give it a nice creamier texture. And this was so good and so easy to make. It is one of my favorite breakfasts. Of course, I'm having it for lunch today, but it's so filling, it's so high in protein and so good for you. Okay. 
Okay, so I had an amazing workout this morning. Breakfast was great. Lunch was so good, AKA my like tahini oats, like breakfast, lunch, whatever. Now I wanna chat with you guys about some supplements that I'm taking. Before we start, I wanted to just kind of preempt this with the fact that I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm not a nurse, I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving you my opinion on what I have learned and what has been working for me. So with that being said, I wanted to tell you first what I learned from a podcast that I was listening to. It's called the Vegan Pregnancy Podcast with Maya. Maya is the host and she is a specifically vegan prenatal dietitian. So she recommends 2.2 to 2.6 micrograms of B12, a DHA omega-3 fatty acid, at least 200 milligrams, folic acid, about 600 micrograms, iron uh, recommended is 27, oh, sorry, eight to 18 milligrams. 27 is the recommended amount, but you do get a lot from your foods like dark leafy greens, lentils, soy products, etc. Choline and iodine. So those are basically what she recommends that you need in your diet in general, not specifically from supplements, not specifically from like a prenatal, but just in general, you should be getting all of this with your either daily food or supplements. Folic acid, I know is one of the most important ones because a lot of people even start taking this like before they're trying to get pregnant. So this helps with neural tube defects for the baby. I'll link everything down below for you so that if you are in need of any supplements, these ones are all vegan and they all have been really, really great for me. So I will link them all below in case you are in need of them. Uh, so the other one I was taking that I can't really get for my diet is choline. And choline usually comes with isotol or inositol. Uh, so yeah, this one is from the Now brand. Again, a vegan vegetarian. You have to make sure that your capsules are vegetarian because a lot of the time the capsules are made from gelatin. Okay, then I'm also taking a B12. So yeah, 250 micrograms of B12 I'm taking. And then I was taking an iron supplement and an omega supplement, but I ran out of them. I took them my first trimester and then I did a blood test. I hadn't been taking them already for like two or three weeks. And my blood results came back really great for my omegas and really great for my iron because I do eat a lot of flax seeds and hemp seeds and chia seeds, lots of like dark leafy greens and lentils and soy products. So I think just from my food consumption, my body's able to get everything that I need. The last thing that I'm taking because I don't eat a lot of fermented foods. I'm living in Mexico right now, which honestly I love so much because it's really nice to just wear like some light flowy dresses all the time. But so yeah, anyways, there's not really like good vegan yogurt here or like lots of good like fermented foods. So I am taking a probiotic as well. Um, just because it's really good for your gut health, it's really good for the baby's gut health. So these are also vegan. They are from Jameson. Again, I'll put them below. That is everything I'm taking right now. My blood tests have been great. So yeah, feeling perfect and confident and super healthy. Another thing I wanted to chat about quickly is just some tips that I've received. You can totally drink coffee. I'm actually having some still right now. If you are like a strong coffee drinker and you have like five, six, seven, eight cups a day, definitely try and cut that back to at least half. But if you're just drinking one or two or even three cups a day, it's totally fine. Another really weird thing I learned that I was super surprised by was that you should not drink kombucha when you're pregnant because it's like raw unfermented bacteria or something so it's not like trustworthy I'm not exactly sure but yeah you can google that but yeah try and avoid kombucha I know a lot of people when they get pregnant they think like oh you're eating for two so you can just like eat everything that you want honestly what I always recommend is to listen to your body listen to how you're feeling if you're hungry eat if you're not hungry you know read a book do something else try not to like binge when you're not hungry you're just bored try and do something else um, because you really only need I think it's about 300 extra calories a day and then when you're breastfeeding, it goes up to about 500. So you're really only eating like maybe a couple extra pieces of fruit or like an extra granola bar or an extra piece of toast or whatever it is. Because I'm very active, I try to get at least 100 grams of protein, basically like 0.8 per body pound. Um, so at least 100 grams of protein per day. And I think on one of the books I was reading, it said to get, make sure you're getting at least 80 grams of protein per day. So I was already reaching that anyway. So I have upped it a little bit more. I think generally I'm trying to get like 120, between 100 and 120. Just listen to your body, honestly, because you know everything best. If you guys have any other questions about pregnancy or vegan pregnancy specifically, comment them down below because I'd love to know even your own experiences or what you've struggled with or just anything that you're curious about. So comment those down below. And it is almost dinner, so let's get back into some dinner now tonight. 
For dinner, we're going to make this lentil potato bowl. It is one of my favorite go-to dinners lately because you can kind of meal prep a lot of the ingredients ahead of time and then just throw this together when you want. We didn't have anything meal prepped uh, because I kind of wanted to show you guys all of the steps. But basically all you're gonna need is some potatoes. You can do big potatoes or little potatoes. We're doing the little ones today and we want them to be crispy. So a nice trick to make them crispy is to soak them in really cold water for half an hour first. So I'm actually gonna even add a few ice cubes in there and then just let that sit for about half an hour. In the meantime, you can prep your lentils. So I'm just going to chop up about half an onion. And then you wanna add that onto a heated oiled pan. And you wanna let those cook for a few minutes until nice and aromatic, until they're a little bit translucent. Then you can add in your lentils. I did pre-cook these a few days ago, but if you haven't pre-cooked your lentils, they only take about 20 minutes in boiling water, or you can just use the ready-made cans. Then you're going to season it with some garlic powder, cumin, paprika, and cayenne pepper. Also a little bit of salt and pepper to your taste. Lastly, you're gonna add in a little bit of tamari or soy sauce and then just give that a nice mix. Then you're just gonna let that sit on low and do the rest of the meal. Once your potatoes are done, you can drain them and let them dry. I love drying them on just like a nice clean kitchen towel to make sure there's no moisture. That way they get really nice and crispy. I love using the same towel to just dry the bowl as well because we are not about making extra dishes here. Then we're going to season that with a little bit of olive oil, dill, paprika, and some salt. And the secret ingredient for extra crispy as well, we're gonna add on a little bit of cornstarch. Once that is combined, you can put into either your preheated oven at around 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius or I love my little air fryer oven, so I'm gonna put that in my air fryer at 375 for 10 minutes to start, and then we'll give them a shake, and then we'll do it for another 10 minutes. I love adding greens to this bowl as well. You could do spinach, kale, you could do broccoli, Brussels sprouts, really anything you like. You could even do other veggies like carrots and cauliflower, but I just love doing something green since I haven't had anything today. And we're gonna use the same bowl as the potatoes. So we're just going to cut our Brussels sprouts in half, season them with a little bit of olive oil, paprika, and salt. Just keep things nice and simple here. Then we're going to put these in with the potatoes. I ended up transferring the potatoes to the mesh dish because I thought they would cook better and the Brussels sprouts I put on the pan beneath and we're gonna let that cook. The Brussels sprouts will probably take just about 10 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to make our final thing for the dish here, which is our sauce, which again, you can pre-do this ahead of time, but I did not just for the sake of this video. All you're gonna do is put some sunflower seeds with water, a clove of garlic, some lime juice, nutritional yeast, and salt. Then just blend that up until you have this nice creamy mixture. And you can add water until thickness desired. I did it pretty thick here, but you can add more water and make it a little bit thinner. Then we're just going to combine everything together into a nice bowl here. So we're gonna do pretty much like half of the bowl Brussels sprouts a quarter potatoes and a quarter of the lentil mixture. And we're going to drizzle our nice, delicious, creamy sauce over top. This sauce you can again use for so many things. You can use it as a salad dressing. You can use it on any other kind of bowls that you like. So versatile and it's so delicious. 
Now you have a very healthy, delicious, high protein, super balanced dinner, high in iron, which is really good for your pregnancy. Make sure to check out some of my other what I eat in a day or week videos to give you some more vegan food inspiration. I'll put them on the screen here for you now. We'll see you guys there.